Good morning. My name is Lauren Burney. I'm from Pace University in New York City, and I'm here today to talk to you about the Billion Oyster Project Curriculum and Community Enterprise for Restoration Science. This is a two-part grant, Phase 2 and 3. Today I will be focusing on Phase 2. As you can see here, this is beautiful New York City with New York Harbor in the background. This was taken last year, 2020. Uh, it's a beautiful place. I'm sure many of you have been here, so it probably warms your heart to see this photo. The original pieces of this grant were five-fold teacher training, student curriculum, digital platform, an after-school program, and community exhibits. This began in, in 2014 and has continued to to date. Some of these pieces are comprised of young students working alongside scientists, researchers, teachers, other students, and provide peer mentoring along with the various components of the project. There are five pillars in total for all phases of this project. Phase two focuses on these components here. I don't want to spend a lot of time going over each of the phases as I will talk about them independently, but you can see that the phases themselves have built upon one another throughout the progress of these grants. We have a very diversified set of teachers that work with us. We have over 200 teachers that have completed the work on this project. There are the various pillars that I will discuss each components of their work and how they have influenced their students in this work. This slide shows you phase two and phase three of the project and how there is some overlap here, focusing on STEM engagement for students, STEM engagement for teachers, and STEM career awareness for students in New York City public schools. This photo here shows you how the students actually go out into the field. It is pillar one, community-based restoration STEM hubs in New York City, done in in coordination with the Billion Oyster Project, Pace University, and the New York City Public Schools. The students actually go into the water and put the cages into the water. They're quite large, but you can see that they are very stalwart in their work. They take measurements at these various sites. They go into the water and actually participate in the research, which is hands-on, inquiry-based, and problem-solving-based research. At the end of this year students will present at a symposium located on Governor's Island their work, their research, and their findings from the work that they did in the previous year. It's, very, it's a very exciting event and we usually have between 500 and 700 students that actually present annually. The second pillar is the Near Peer Mentoring Program. Students work together as I mentioned alongside scientists, teachers, and as well as their peers. This vertical planning hubs or pods allow for students to work in coordination and ne get necessary support in their work, their research, and reaching their various goals. As you can see, they all get very excited. They're very happy to be working with one another. Again, this is all pre-COVID photos, so that's the reason for no mass, please note. Pillar three is the Restoration Science Professional Development Programs for Elementary Teachers. Elementary teachers will work alongside teach other teachers and experts in the field in the STEM industry, learning about the various aspects of STEM and the Billion Oyster Project curriculum that has been designed with teachers as well. As you can see, the teachers also participate in some of this research. They get to the water's edge. Many times students haven't even ever been to the water's edge, so it's very exciting to see students participate in these activities as well as alongside their teacher. We also have the central hub of this project, which is the digital platform. The digital platform houses all the research, the data, the information that students have uploaded, the information that teachers have uploaded, as well as various aspects of the project. Students can also sign up for the events as well as teachers signing up for events and we're growing this daily to become more robust. Pillar 4 is the advanced methods in restoration science for high school students. So teachers and students work alongside scientists to understand how research is conducted in various labs. We have four labs across New York City that participate in this component of the program. 
as you can see, there's a variety of activities that students and teachers participate in, so it's very, very exciting. The STEM Oyster Research Stations have shown that the engagement of these students and teachers are really exciting and interesting, and we hope that some of these components of training will ensure that students will enter into the field of STEM. We have some potential STEM learning centers and oyster parks that have been designed over in Red Hook. We hope that these parks will come to fruition, but given the pandemic and COVID, some of these things have been slowed down significantly. We hope that these things will eventually pick up and that we will be able to continue our research in long-term settings such as these. To date, we've influenced over 5,600 students, 127 teachers currently are participating. We have our digital platform, we have waterfront location, we have citizen scientists that volunteer, and all of these little dots on the slide here indicate where we have our oyster research stations. One vital component of our work is the idea of being able to broaden the participation and share the work and research that we've done and the intellectual merit that comes along with these projects funded by the National Science Foundation. We have created curriculum for middle school teachers. We've created a field science manual that depicts New York Harbor. We have white papers, articles. We participate in colloquia. We have videos that are done annually to share our work. We have the digital platform, which houses big data, as I mentioned. We have permanent displays, one which will be unveiled this summer at the New York Aquarium. We have a STEM teacher training model. We have a STEM mentoring model. We have restoration-based science, community science models, and we have mobile apps and computer science that's designed by our students. A major component of this is the idea of computational thinking and how this computational thinking is embedded within the various forms of curriculum that's been designed by the Billion Oyster Project alongside our project coordinators. So the students, as you can see, get very excited as, on an annual basis to share this work and, and meet with each other. We hope that that will be something possible this year, um, uh, although it will be virtually, but years after we will be in person. One of the things that's very important to us is to see the impact of our work and how that impact um, has been able to be influenced not only locally, but nationally and hopefully globally as well. And so creating these partnerships as we've done through citizen science, community-based science, restoration science has allowed these partners of CBOs, NPOs, STEM industry professionals to come together and work together and create a model that's hopefully long-term sustainable, not only here in New York City, but that can be replicated elsewhere in various components of the world. And engaging the community, we decided that the effort should be on focusing on clean water for New York Harbor. And in doing that, we are restoring the oysters within New York Harbor with New York City Public Schools, the Billion Oyster Project, Pace University, the New York Aquarium, and many other partners. Another component of this work, as I mentioned, is getting students engaged and excited about careers in STEM. There's various models that we use within the project that support these ideas and components. As you can see here, students participate in a variety of activities to engage themselves in STEM community. Another component of this work is the Living Breakwaters, which is off the Staten Island side of the harbor. And this work is to hopefully prevent any further Superstorm Sandys like we've had in the past. So some of this work that students do also assist in building these. This photo is really, to me, very, very important because you can see students and how they get out into the water and how excited they get about doing this kind of work. It allows them to feel the components of STEM, do inquiry-based learning, work on their techniques, the tools that we give them, and work along scientists along the way. We hope that one day we will have a future impact. This is a slide designed by SCAPE that depicts perhaps something in the future where people will be able to walk out into the various piers and locations within New York Harbor and participate in nature in a much more efficient and effective way. The idea that 
citizen scientists from wherever can come here and visit. We hope that you will do the same. Another idea is a hub which sits on the beach here where you can see the students and teachers can gather together, learn, participate, investigate, and become a part of this community. We hope that future partnerships will be plausible. We hope that by sharing this information as I've done today that people will be interested in participating in the work that we do. Um, this communication within this community and external globally uh, allows for us to share the work that we've done so far and what we eventually see ourselves doing on a global level. We also annually have the STEM Institute, which is at Pace University. This allows for students to learn how to code, participate in game apps, and also participate with each other on a global level, um, which is very exciting for students and for us as, as teachers and educators and scientists to work alongside them and watch them learn and watch them grow. And again, this is offered annually at Pace University in New York City. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate this uh, ability to come and speak to you virtually. I hope that this will resume in person very, very soon for all of us. I know this has been a tremendously trying year, but I'm very grateful. Um, there are days, uh, as this photo depicts, where you feel like you're up against a bull, um, and as fearless as you may be, those days are very, very trying. So in conclusion, I just want to say thank you to everyone that participated. My information is here. Should you want to contact us, come and visit New York City, we certainly welcome all global community members once it's safe for you to do so, and we look forward to hosting you here in New York City. Thank you so much for your time. Again, my name is Lauren Burney, Pace University.